Okay, so I'm going to present to you the, um, the statistical unit data specifications. Uh, so it's one of the focus on one of these districts of uh, this room uh, Hugo just described at the beginning. Uh, so I will uh, present the last version of the data specification. So maybe if you took part to the, the review of version two, you will see some, uh, some changes. Uh, so about the context of this uh, thematic working group, uh, the, defini the definition of statistical unit uh, theme in the Inspire Directive is the unit of uh, dissemination for use of statistical information. Uh, and the TVG has decided to, to restrict the scope of uh, this theme only to the spatial unit and not to the statistical data uh, that are uh, usually uh, attached to this unit. So it's really uh, a focus on the spatial aspects uh, and not on the business uh, thematic statistical data attached to, to that. So that's why this, uh, this theme is really uh, uh, under the scope of this, uh, this workshop on uh, reporting. Uh, so one of the characteristics of uh, so this pineapple smells quite a lot. It's <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's it's re really mature. It should be very, very good. Yeah, it's, you can smell it. <laughs> uh, so w one of the specificities of this theme is that we have uh, really well identified data producers and actors, such as the National uh, Statistical Institute, the National Mapping Agencies, and also Eurostat. All these organizations are provided part of this statistical, uh, statistical related data. Uh, usually the National Statistical Institute produce uh, and publish statistical data that are aggregated on some statistical units that are sometimes, it's not the case of all member states, I, I know it's a, it's a caricature, uh, on statistical units that are maintained and published by uh, mapping agencies. And Eurostat also is an important actor because many member states already report some statistical data to Eurostat, and Eurostat is involved in the, the harmonization and publication of, of some of this uh, statistical data. Uh, so as you can imagine, uh, among the group, we had a lot of uh, discussion about the organizational challenges uh, behind this uh, theme. All, all these organizations uh, with Inspire will have to interact with each other, uh, etc. Uh, so we have in this theme many existing practices. Uh, as I said, there are already many statistical data reported uh, from member states to Eurostat based on the well-established uh, nomenclature of units, which is called NUTS. I'm sure all of you know, know that already. And we have also some existing standards, such as uh, SDMX, which is used for the publication of statistical data, and uh, a very recent uh, standard called uh, TGS for Table Joining Service, uh, which is used for the, um, the joining of uh, thematic and spatial data. So it's really under the scope of, uh, of this, uh, this uh, sim. Uh, so on this slide, I have displayed uh, some example of uh, data sets that are under the scope of, uh, of Inspire. Uh, so some of them, here you may know the NUTS data set, Urban Audit, some other greedy data sets. Uh, so it's just to show you an illustration of uh, what was under the scope of, uh, of this theme, which, which kind of data set were under the scope. So I'm not going to show you some UML diagram. I have them uh, at the end of the presentation, so if you want to discuss more detail, uh, we, can, uh, we can discuss on them. Uh, but I would like just to show you the main characteristic of the data model we have been develop de developing. Uh, so one of the most important characteristics is that we have two different kinds of statistical units. We have vector statistical units, such as this one, for example, and gridded statistical units. Uh, and both of them have a very uh, strong hierarchical structure. Uh, so we have different levels of subdivisions, usually of statistical units. And the same exists for uh, statistical grids, where we have uh, multi-resolution uh, grids. So we also have uh, often some uh, multi-scale representation for this, uh, these statistical units, uh, such as here, here for example, for 
different SQL units, we have uh, different uh, resolution, different levels of uh, generalization, and the data model uh, take it into account. Uh, so another characteristic, uh, and I think it goes, uh, maybe it will provide an answer to one of the questions of our German colleague, is how to deal with this uh, temporal aspect and all the changes of statistical units. And in the model, we have uh, included uh, a proposal for how to deal with these five kind of changes, creation, deletion, changes of statistical units, and also this more tricky one, like aggregation and uh, splitting. Uh, so the... The thematic working group has proposed some things that has been reviewed for version two, and we had some very good uh, feedback from some uh, reviewers. Uh, and it will allow to, to make an evolution from a, a snapshot, what we could call a snapshot uh, view of the, data, of the special data sets, where you have every year, for example, one release of a data set toward a more continuous uh, updating of the, the data. Uh, we could imagine that uh, every time a change occurs, uh, this change is uh, made available to, to the users. So I can go more into detail if you have, I, I suppose we will have to discuss this topic more maybe this afternoon, uh, so we could, uh, we could discuss more into detail later. So for the specific case of uh, reporting, how to use uh, the statistical unit for reporting, uh, so the, we have an annex in the data specification on statistical units, especially on this topic. Uh, and the approach is a very basic approach in uh, data modeling. Uh, so, and it's compliant also with the recommendation of the generic conceptual model. Uh, the, report, the link between the reported data and the, the units is done through the identifier. Uh, so in the data specification for statistical units, we have defined for all vector statistical units an inspire identifier, which is structured like, uh, like that, uh, following the recommendation of the generic conceptual model. We have also some thematic identifier. We follow exactly the same uh, approach as uh, area management and restriction zone presented by Michael uh, just uh, before. And for grids, we have also, so it was one of the demands from the, um, the reviewers. We have also included a, a code for each grid cell to, to make the, the reporting more, more easy. Uh, so how this uh, model may be used in the future. Uh, so here is um, a presentation of the current situation. We, we have uh, some statistical data, such as, for example, uh, statistical data on population. It's very, very simple that are published with usually uh, what, what we call a geographical uh, key. Uh, and usually all the, inf the special information behind this, uh, this geographical key is not available. So one of the contributions of Inspire will be to publish all these special parts of the statistical information. We'll have all the units, which will, will be all of them uh, identified by an Inspire identifier. And as I said, also the door is open for thematic identifier, such as uh, that one. So we could imagine that in the next few years, uh, when Inspire will come into force, we will have this, uh, some services with these geometries uh, available. So it will open uh, the gate to this kind of operation. Uh, users will be able to join some of the geometries with the data. And in the future, maybe we could uh, imagine that uh, statistical data will be reported using the Inspire identifier. And we'll have not anymore a, a join, but it will be more uh, a linking between statistical and, and special data. Uh, and in, in that view, we, we could almost see uh, a full integration of statistical and special data in, uh, in a more integrated uh, system, let's say. So this could be seen as a, as a bridge in the city of Rome between two districts that were not so, so, many, so much linked uh, before. It's a very good uh, image for the city. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, as I say to you, I have the UML diagram if you have some more, more precise questions on, on that. Thanks. Thanks very much. There's already a question immediately. Okay, please. Sorry, just one short question, but first thank you to this interesting uh, presentation which 
uh, goes exactly in the right direction. Uh, the only question I have, you mentioned in the beginning the scale and the uh, generalization of uh, geographic features, but you didn't mention it in the later links. How is it foreseen in the specification? Thanks a lot. So I can, I can show you how it is modeled. Excuse me? You are not expected to... Okay, <laughs> so uh, because I know everybody loves UML diagrams, uh, here is one of them. Uh, for the modeling approach chosen by the group has been to, to have a unique uh, um, feature type for vector such scale units, and it's possible uh, for each of these feature types to have several geometries, and uh, some of them may be uh, qualified by some uh, scale uh, relevance uh, ranges, uh, so that it's possible to, to describe one unit with different uh, scales. Uh, and I, I, during this summer, I did a, a testing of, the, of this model on using the NUTS data set, uh, because the NUTS data set is published on uh, Eurostat uh, websites nowadays, and they have different uh, scales for the NUTS data set, and uh, it worked. Okay, so if you have a question about the implementation and the feasibility, uh, it's, uh, it worked. It's something that can maybe generalize for all, for some other themes of Inspire, uh, but uh, yeah, maybe we can discuss this afternoon the fact that the, the temporal and the scale dimensions are, have not been really considered as a priority in, uh, in the data models till now. <laughs>